death come upon them and let them go down to hell alive for wickedness within their dwellings and among them. I call to God in the Lord heard me evening and morning, and at noon I will pray if I allow him to hear my voice, to get delivered by showing peace to those who oppose me, for they were meant to me. God will hear and humble them, even he who was before the ages, because they have not feared God, there is no change in them. He has stretched forth his hand in vengeance, they have smiled his covenant, they were scattered by the wrath of his countenance, their hearts were hardened. Their words were smoother than oil, and yet they are arrows. Cast your sorrows from the Lord, and he will sustain you. You will never permit the righteous to be shaken. But you, O oh God, will bring them down to the destruction. Men of blood and treachery shall not without past your days. Why, O oh Lord, will hope in you? He who dwells under the protection of the Most High shall abide in the shelter of the God of heaven. He will say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold. My God is whom I will hope. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowl and from troubling words. With his feathers he will overshadow you, and under his feet you will have hope. As with his shield is true, he will come with you. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor that which walks in darkness, neither the pestilence, nor the demon of the day. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my hope. Established a Messiah's habitation. Evil shall not come near you, no scourge come near your habitation. Deliver me, O Lord, from the dumbness and the silence of sin. And my mouth will show forth your praise. For you will give a new charge and keep your keep your way. Almighty, you will bear your blessing against the stone. You will tread upon the life of the eye of the blind and the dragon will trample underfoot. Because you have set a stone upon me, I will deliver him, I will protect him. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him, and I will give him in trouble. I will deliver him and glorify him. The long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Glory to the mercy, Lord, and mercy, Lord, and mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. You are transfigured upon the mount of Christ our God, revealing your glory to your disciples such as they were able to bear. Let your everlasting light shine also upon us sinners, through the intercession from the birth of our God, the giver of light, glory to you. Now and ever, and unto the ages of ages, amen. As we have no witness because of the multitude of the of the virgin and you see with him who was born of you, so much more the supplications of a mother able to find an master to find hardness. Despite the Who calls on men to 
salvation through the promise of life gives to God. Accept, O Lord, our prayers at this hour and direct our lives according to your commandments. Cleanse our souls, cleanse our bodies, restore our minds, purify our thoughts, and deliver us from all such things. Help us as about from your holy angels that guarded and guided by the we may be of faith and the knowledge of your unapproachable glory, and you are blessed unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious be as compared than the seraphim. Without defilement, you gave birth to God the Virgin, they have so much to be in the name of the the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save all. Amen. O God, the Lord of the compassion of our creation, the leader of the gospel, tend your mercy, send down your mercy, God, and Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of our kind, and through his precious cross, for the handwriting of our sins, thereby trampling over the principalities and powers of darkness. O Master and Lover of mankind, accept these prayers of thanksgiving and supplication from us sinners. And deliver us from every deadly and dark transgression and from all visible and invisible enemies who have sought to do us harm. Nail our flesh with the fear of evil and let from our hearts and minds and the words or thoughts. But wound our souls with your love, so that ever pleased and upon you, guided by your light and behold of you, the eternal light that no man can approach, we may send up unceasing praises and thanks to you. The Father, without beginning, together with your only begotten Son, with your all holy, good, and light, and the Spirit. O Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, you are everywhere and you fill all things. Treasury of good things and giver of life, come, abide in us, cleanse us from every impurity, and save our souls, O good one. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill among men. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will show forth your praise. Lord, cleanse me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. It is time for the Lord to act. Bless us, our God, always, now, and forever, and through the ages of ages. Amen. Forgive me, mothers and sisters. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from above, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of God's holy church, is for the union of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the soul of God, and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our metropolitan chief, and our Archbishop Nathaniel, for the honorable Presbytery, for the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this country, for its president, those in civil authority, and its armed forces. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our friend, this Mother Christophora, for the sisterhood of this monastery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this monastery, for this city, for every city and country, for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for the abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and keep us, O God. By your grace, Lord have mercy. We are our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and the Virgin Mary. For all the saints, blessed among ourselves and each other and all our life, to Christ our God. Lord our God, your power is incomparable, your glory is incomprehensible. 
Your mercy is immeasurable, your love for man is inexpressible. Look down on us and on this holy house with pity, O Master, and impart the riches of your mercy and your compassions to us and to those who pray with us. For to you are to all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Supplications to you, 
you have promised that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you would grant their requests. Fulfill now, Lord, the petitions of your servants as may be expedient for them, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, everlasting life. For you are a good God, the lover of mankind, and to you we send the glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages.
holy high priest, but it was by the one saying to him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. As he says also in another place, Thou art a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Peace be to you who reads. And to your spirits, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. in Warren, Ohio, at 
and I uh, went to the hospital to visit an old man who was uh, dying. His name was Steve, Steve Shushareva. <laughs> and he was a, a slight man, bald-headed, lying there for many months, very ill. Some reason, somehow, he just couldn't let himself go. In fact, I still see in my mind's eye on his arms, little black bows where the bones were coming through. He couldn't have weighed more than, I don't know, 65, 70 pounds. <clears throat> and so as a young priest, I uh, thought I'd do my duty. So I went in there and I started very glibly talking about the, cry, the cross of Christ and how Christ suffered, and how he died, and, uh, how he gave himself for us. And that old man, he looked at me, fat young priest, about 40 pounds heavier than I am now. And he looked at me and he said, Father, I've been lying here for about three years. Jesus was on the cross for three hours. Maybe six if you use Mark's version of the gospel. He said, I'd gladly suffer through three hours or six hours and get this all over with. <clears throat> and I'll never forget how he said that. And of course, it struck me, <laughs> and it remains with me to this day. But of course, what occurred to me then, and hopefully ever more clearly and deeply as my life progressed, was that the difference between Jesus Christ and Steve was that Christ was God and Steve was a man. And that the teaching is that because Christ experienced the mocking, the scourging, the beating, the reviving, the cross, the crucifixion, the spear, the death, that in those three hours or however many it was on that Friday, the Son of God in human flesh suffered incomparably more than all of the suffering of creatures from the foundation of the world. Because it was God who was suffering. And then, I remember Steve also said something else. He said, and you know, he was God. I'm just Steve. And I think he meant by saying that, that this was nothing for him. He was God. You know, God. What could it mean for him? But you learn that later on, his suffering was exactly incomparably more because he was God. Because he was God. Because he was experiencing all the wages of sin and death and suffering and madness and craziness and injustice uh, of the whole of humanity and all creatures from the foundation of the world in his body on that cross. And with our limited human minds in this fallen world, we can't even begin to comprehend what it would be for the Son of God to be abandoned by his Father to be left by all his disciples, to be hanging there alone with only his mother and John standing there, we can't even begin to imagine what that was. But that's the center of our faith. It was God who died in human flesh. Later on, still in war in Ohio, <laughs> there was another woman dying. Her name was Catherine, Catherine Augusta. She had cancer. She was only 38 years old. She had three uh, young daughters. And uh, she suffered tremendously. I would just, I kind of learned my lesson a little bit, and I read psalms to her rather than glibly chatting <laughs> about Christ. <laughs> uh, and I remember how she used to say, Read that part again, Father, read that part again. You know? About I'm lying here and my bones are sticking to me and you know where are you and all this. 
but one uh, one night uh, when I came home, I was uh, studying in Pittsburgh at the time, a day a week. Came home, it was after 11 at night, and there was a, a note on the table. I know my wife wrote it. Said, uh, Kay, Catherine called and said, no matter what time you get home, she wants you to come in to see her tonight. <clears throat> so I thought, oh, you know, what's this? So I got back in the car, went over to the hospital. It was only 10 minutes away. And I came in, she says, is that your father? I said, yeah. And I said, what is it? And she said to me, I just want you to know something. She said, you know, when we were praying and I had remission earlier, we were so happy. And you were so happy, everybody. But now, there's no remission. And she said to me, I just want you to know, it's not your fault. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> That's a good one. She said, God knows what he's doing. And he knows what he has to do. And she said, I, I didn't know, you know, when I'm going to leave this life, so I just had to tell you. I couldn't fall asleep or even try to sleep uh, unless I told you that today. And then she came home on uh, Lazarus uh, Saturday, the night before. And I was in church. Her daughters were there, teenage kids. One was younger, even. And uh, they came from her house and said, Father, the hour has come. You better come right now. So I took the three girls in the car, drove over to their house, which was also 10 minutes away. And I was talking to the girls about their mom going to be with the Lord. I remember little, a little one uh, said to me, is she going to rise up like Lazarus? I said, yeah, in good time. But now we have to let her go. But what happened was, she came into the house, there were people all around her bed, and she was sitting up in bed. And she asked for something to eat. And then her family was around and others, and she said to us all, you have to believe. You have to believe. This is the will of God. And then she told her kids, be sure to take a bath, you know, tomorrow Sunday. Actually, the next day was uh, actually uh, Saturday. But I went there uh, on Palm Sunday morning, before the Virginia gave her Holy Communion, she actually received it standing up by her bed. And then uh, I said goodbye, went to church. And uh, that night she uh, had a, went back into her, her, her suffering. And um, she died on Great Friday during the reading of the Royal Hours. I never wear a wristwatch in church, but that day I had my watch on for some reason because we had had a funeral before the service to bury uh, a man who died before the Holy Pascha was celebrated. And someone came in and said, Father Tom, you have to go to the hospital now. The end is here. So I looked, I said, well, I'll read the gospel first, I said to myself. So I read the gospel about, and he gave up his spirit. I looked at my wristwatch, what time it was. I told our reader, church reader, to keep on reading until I got back, <laughs> you know, uh, those hours. And when I came there, she had, was already gone. The, uh, her funeral was uh, on Bright Monday. We did the Paschal Vespers in church with her body there on Easter afternoon. And the funeral was <coughs> unforgettable. <coughs> to this day, unforgettable. And when we were leaving Warren after a few years, her family gave me this cross that I wear. I still have it. They paid five dollars for it at St. Ethan's. That's how prices were in those days. Now it'd be a hundred, two hundred dollars. Hand carved Mount Athos. You know, I've been wearing it ever since. But there's one more event that I have to tell today. 
Again, I had to go to the hospital. This time was much later. I was at the seminary already. And again, a woman was dying of uh, bone cancer. And um, uh, I went to see her. And I came in, and I don't know, again, you know, blah, blah, and all that, what I do, and say something. And perhaps I was tired or traumatized by her suffering or whatever. But she, uh, as I was carrying on and I came in, she looked at me and she said, Father Tom, just go home. Just go home. Go back. Uh, now, I said, you want me to leave? And she said, yeah, I want you to leave. I said, can I read a song, a prayer? No, 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 just leave, she said, just leave. Her name was Felina, actually. Gay, Austin. And um, so I went back to seminary. It was a desperate time. I walked up the steps of the chapel. And there was a woman standing on the porch of the chapel. Very wonderful woman. And uh, she said to me, Father Tom, you look terrible. What happened? Something happened? I said, yeah, I just got thrown out of the hospital room. <laughs> I was told to go home, you know. And so I was going into Vespers, and this woman, Seraphima, her church name was, uh, she said to me, she, she, I could see she took all her courage in her hands, and she looked me right in the eye, and she said to me, you know why, don't you? I said, uh, well, no. I said, if you know, tell me. <laughs> and she said to me this, she said, because when you go to the hospital and see people and pray, you, you, you bring God there. You bring the Lord, you bring grace, you bring hope. But for some reason today, God wasn't with you. It was just Father Tom. She doesn't need Father Tom. She needs God. And then this woman said to me, can I tell you something else? I thought, well, you're on a roll. <laughs> you know, stuck my hand in my pocket and grabbed my my little prayer rope. <laughs> and uh, she said to me, you know, you do that at other times too. She said, there's times when you serve and when you preach, you pray. She said, I'll just speak for myself. I know God is there. But sometimes it's just Father Tom. And then she said to me, nobody needs Father Tom. People need God. They need what you bring, the crucified Christ, the hope of everlasting life, the comfort of our salvation, that that God died on the cross in a suffering we can't even imagine. And that's what people need from the priest. And that's what we all need from each other, to bring God to one another. Finally, when the end of this so wonderful woman came, and I believe that cancer saved her life, actually. She was pretty awful before she got cancer. <laughs> really awful. She admits it herself. Um, but I was there in the room, and it was her last moments. And uh, breathing heavenly, those who know that experience. And um, those who know me know I'm a rather hard-hearted person. I don't cry easily. I worry about that, because the Holy Father said you can't go to heaven unless you can weep. I'm very scared, I ain't gonna go. <laughs> but what happened was, I was standing there, reading her husband and kids were there, young kids. And I started to cry. Like I really cried. I was surprised myself at what had come over me. And after I finished, <laughs> She died. And her husband said to me, Father Tom, I think she was waiting for you to weep. And she couldn't go on till you did. That's what he told me. And so that cross is still in the middle of the church. 
remember Steve and Catherine and Gay, Galina, and all those. The first nine months I was in that parish, I had 11 funerals. The oldest person was in their 50s. And a funny other story happened. I went back to that church 18 years later on a Sunday. First time I'd been back on a Sunday. And a woman came to me at the coffee hour and she said, Father Tom, do you remember when you came here? So many people repose in the Lord. They, they, they left us. The old ladies were saying, oh, what did the new priest bring here, you know? And uh, I said, oh, yeah, I remember. She said, my sister died, and Sam died, and Steve died, and Mary Lux died, and Dan died, and Don died. You know, she went through the list there. <laughs> and it was a funny thing, because the next day I went back to Kentucky, where I was with our son Johnny at the time, teaching in school there. And I got a call the next day. It was from her niece. She said, last night, my Aunt Anna died. <laughs> well, we all died. But we can't die anymore. Because Christ has to do death with himself. And it's been transformed into the victory, which is our faith. So every time we stand before that cross, that's what we know. That's what we know. And God has his ways. And only when we surrender to them do we understand. And I just read the other day on the internet, somebody sent me a story. This will be the last story. <laughs> and, it, and, and the story was that a man in Russia was standing in a museum where there were holy icons. Perhaps even the Vladimir Mother of God in, in Moscow uh, Museum. And he was looking at the, the icons or whatever. Was there a cross, perhaps? And he, and he just sort of said out loud, that's a very beautiful artwork. I mean, it's really gorgeous, and those artists are so talented. He said, but I don't see anything more in that than any great art. It's wood, it's a painting, and it's marvelous. And again, a woman standing next to him heard what he said, and she said to him, if you want to understand what that's about, you can't stand there. You have to stand on your knees and bow down. And then you'll understand what it is. And that is the truth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let us say with all our soul, with all our mind, let us say And have mercy. Oh, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you. Hear us and have mercy. and our sisters in Christ. Again, we pray for this country, for its president, those in civil authority and its armed forces, and for all suffering people throughout the entire world, for all the victims of injustice, persecution, oppression, terror, tortures, calamities, hunger, and war, for those who are suffering and for those in the Ukraine and for peace to that land, those who are suffering in Egypt, in Syria, throughout the Middle East, those who are being held in captivity, we pray for their deliverance and for their salvation. Again, we pray for our abbess, Mother Christophora, for the sisterhood of this monastery, for their health, and for their salvation. So again, we pray for the servants of God departed this life before us, for the newly departed, ever memorable Metropolitan Philip, 
For Alexander, Martha, Lucia, Ina, John, Miroslav, Mary, and Sophie, for all of our fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, children, who hear, and in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, forgiveness of sins. For the servants of God, the sick and the suffering brothers and sisters, Archimandric Roman, Archpriest Alexander, Archpriest Paul, Archpriest Andrew, the priest Lawrence, the priest John, the Pesgitera Janus, Matushka Stephanie, Teresa Alexander, the infant Yelena, Pano, Joel, Vichyslav, Rosemary, for Cody, Debbie, Suzanne, Phil, and James, for all suffering people, especially those who are suffering in the great landslide in the state of Washington yesterday, and all those who perish. We pray <coughs> for all those who have asked us, unworthy though we be, to pray for them and for their salvation. And we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this monastery and in all of God's holy churches, for all those who labor and who work, for those who serve, for those who sing, and for the people present here who await your great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, our God, accept this fervent supplication of your servants, and mercy on us according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Send down your bounties upon us, upon all of your people, who await the rich mercy that comes from you. For you are a merciful God, and you love mankind. And to you we send up glory, to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Let us, the faithful, pray for the catechumens. Let us pray that the Lord may have mercy on them. Has visited our lowliness, 
who has sent us your humble and sinful and unworthy servants to serve at your holy altar before your holy glory. By the power of your Holy Spirit, strengthen us for this service and grant speech to our lips so that we may call down the grace of your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that are about to be offered. That guarded always by your might, we may send up glory to you, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Oh. No one who is bound with the desire and the pleasures of the flesh is worthy to approach it down here to serve the King of Glory. For to serve you is great and awesome even to the heavenly powers. Now we assign all earthly cares 
His Beatitude Tikhon, Archbishop of Washington, the Metropolitan of the United States and Canada, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and forever, to the ages of ages, amen, his eminence Nathaniel, Archbishop of Detroit, and of the Romanian Orthodox Episcopate in America. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and forever, to the ages of ages, amen. The entire Episcopate of the Church the priests and the deacons, the monks and the nuns, this monastery, <clears throat> its abbess mother Christophora, his sisterhood and his friends and benefactors, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and forever, to the ages of ages, amen. This country is president, those in civil authority as armed forces, and all suffering people throughout the whole world. May the Lord God remember them in his kingdom always, now and forever, to the ages of ages, amen. The sick and the suffering brothers and sisters, all who have asked us, I worthy though we be to pray for them. May the Lord God remember them in his kingdom, always, now and forever, to the ages of ages, amen. The servants of God departed this life before us, especially the ever-memorable Metropolitan Philip. May the Lord God remember him in his kingdom, with all those departed this life, always, now and forever, and to ages of ages, amen. And you, and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Peace and repentance, 
Let us ask of the Lord, and the Lord. A Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful, and for a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask of the Lord. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, say, O Tobo, together with Mary, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other, and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, o Lord. O Lord, our God, you have created us, you have brought us into this life, you have shown to us the ways to salvation. You have bestowed on us the revelation of heavenly mysteries. You are the one who has appointed us to this service in the power of your Holy Spirit. Therefore, Lord, count us worthy to be ministers of your new covenant, servants of your holy mysteries. Through the greatness and mercy, accept us as we draw near to your holy altar, so that we may be worthy to offer to you this reasonable and spiritual and bloodless sacrifice for our sins, and for the errors and ignorances of all of your people. Having received it upon your holy, heavenly, and ideal altar above the heavens as a sweet spiritual fragrance, send down upon us and return the grace of your own Holy Spirit. Look upon us, God. Behold this our service. Receive it as you receive the gifts of Abel, the sacrifices of Noah, the whole birth offerings of Abraham, the priestly offices of Moses and Aaron, and the peace offerings of Samuel. Even as you receive from your holy apostles this true worship, so now in your goodness, accept these gifts from the hands of us sinners. For you, Lord, O oh Lord, having been, uh, having been accounted worthy to serve you without scandal, without offense, at your holy altar, may we receive the reward of wise and faithful stewards on that awesome and dreadful day of your just retribution. Through the compassions of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and ever and through the ages of ages. Peace be unto all. Let us love one another, that with one mind we may confess.
Lord God, Father Almighty and Adorable, it is truly meet and right and befitting the magnificence of your holiness to praise you, to sing to you, to bless you, to worship you, to give thanks to you, to glorify you, the only truly existing God, and to offer to you this our reasonable and spiritual worship with a contrite heart and with a spirit of humility, for you have granted us the knowledge of your truth, who can utter your mighty acts, or make all your praises known, or tell of all your wonders and miracles at all times. O Master of all Lord of heaven and earth and of all creation, visible and invisible, who sits upon the throne of glory and beholds the depths, without beginning, invisible, incomprehensible, indescribable, changeless. O Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our great God and Savior, our hope, who is the image of your goodness, the exact very seal of your very likeness, showing forth in himself you, O Father, Jesus Christ, the living word, the true God, the eternal wisdom, the life, the sanctification, the power, the true life, through whom the Holy Spirit was revealed, who is the spirit of truth, the gift of divine sonship, the pledge of future inheritance, the first fruits of eternal blessings, the life-creating power, the fountain of sanctification, through whom every creature of reason and understanding worships you and always sings to you a hymn of glory. For all things are your servants. You are praised by angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and the many I cherubim. Round about you stand the seraphim, one with six wings, the other with six wings, with two they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, with two they fly, crying one to another with unceasing voices and ever resounding praises. Singing the triumphal hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, Holy, Holy, set them in a paradise of delight, but promising, but promising eternal life and the enjoyment of everlasting blessings in the observance of your commandments. But when man disobeyed you, the true God who had created him, and was deceived by the guile of the serpent, becoming subject to death through his own transgressions, you, O God, in your righteous judgment, sent him forth from paradise into this world, returning him to the earth from which he was taken yet providing for him the salvation of regeneration in your Christ himself. For you did not turn yourself away for, forever from your creatures whom you had made, O good one, nor did you forget the works of your hands. Through the tender compassion of your mercy, you visited him in various ways. You sent prophets. You performed mighty works by your saints, who in every generation were well-pleasing to you. You spoke to us, by the mouth of your servants, the prophets, foretelling to us the salvation which was to come. You gave us the law as a help. You appointed angels as guardians. And when the fullness of time had come, you spoke to us through your Son himself, by whom you also have created the ages. Your Son, who being the radiance of your glory and the exact image of your divine person, 
opposing all things by the word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal to you, the God and Father. He was God before the ages, yet he appeared on earth and lived among men, becoming incarnate of a holy virgin. He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being likened to the body of our lowliness, that he might liken us to the image of his divine glory. For as by man sin entered into this world, and by sin, death, <clears throat> so it pleased you, your only begotten Son, <clears throat> who was in the bosom of you, the God and Father, who was born of a woman, the only Theotokos, the ever Virgin Mary, who was born under the law to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who were dead in Adam might be made alive in your Christ himself. He lived in this world, and he gave us commandments of salvation, releasing us from the delusions